we're here to talk about one of the most exciting actors working today. That's right, I'm talking about Keanu. God, what a name, Keanu. I love that name. It's so cool. And you know who I'm talking, you know my Keanu. You're not thinking like, oh, you mean the cat from that movie Keanu? No, I'm talking about Keanu Reeves, baby. Here's the thing, Matrix Revolutions, nope, Matrix Resurrections, don't love those titles, comes out very soon. And in an interview, Keanu Reeves said he would be honored and excited to be part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And, you know, it's tricky to find an actor who has not been part of one of these yet. You know, like a Leonardo DiCaprio or something like that, but wants to be. So, someone suggested on Twitter that maybe I take a look and see which characters Keanu would be great for in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So like, which one's coming up that we will probably see in the future, or just could see, would be good casting for Keanu Reeves. Now, I think Keanu Reeves is a fascinating actor because he has so many iconic characters. And I think the first step in figuring out who Keanu Reeves should be cast at involves looking back at some of the characters he's played in the past. So I have a list here. Let's look at some. Nine iconic Keanu Reeves roles. Some a little bit more iconic than others. Got Matrix, John Wick, Speed, Point Break, Bill and Ted, The Replacements, Toy Story 4, Johnny Mnemonic, Constantine. I'll even throw in that one rom-com where he plays himself. And you know what? I'll throw in Cyberpunk a, a little bit. It'll come up once or twice. So I want to look at what we're getting with those roles. What do people know Keanu Reeves for? Because I think that's going to factor into who he plays. Now, I don't think he needs to play someone who's exactly like someone who plays before. But I do think if we're narrowing it down, we can take a look at some of Keanu Reeves' strengths and say, what's he really good at? What does he do consistently well? and then say, hey, who in the Marvel Cinematic Universe will probably have that vibe? All right, so we got Neo. A, Kung Fu. He knows Kung Fu, that's very important. B, Jesus-y. C, Ethereal. Four, did I do four? D, he's the one. So he's very powerful. And then five, computers. He does the machines. Also six, Wachowskis. Seven, Internet Man. John Wick, he's all about revenge. He's all about family. He loves his guns. He's an assassin. Also big car guy. Johnny Utah from Point Break. He's about surfing. He's a cop. He's from California and he loves extreme sports. Ted Logan from Bill and Ted. He is radical. He has got that 80s, 90s vibe. He can time travel and he plays the guitar. And I guess now he's a dad. Number whatever, Jack Traven from Speed. He's bus related, also a cop, fast. Shane Falco from The Replacements plays football. He is a leader. He's got some rough edges. Duke Kaboom from Toy Story 4 drives a motorcycle. He's a stuntman. He's got a mustache. He's kind of scared, but he can be brave. Johnny Mnemonic. He has a computer brain. This is another internet man. John Constantine. He's connected to demons, angels, hell. He is a detective kind of guy or private investigator. I'm not sure exactly what role he is in that movie. And I think those are all the guys I named. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yep. Also, yeah, that rom-com where he's Keanu Reeves, but a little bit worse. And then Johnny Silverhand, again, musical, robotic, maybe in your head, another internet man, cyberpunk. -y. So I have a list here. 16 characters that I think Keanu Reeves would be terrific for. Now, I think some are more realistic than others because I think there's some things we need to consider when talking about who Keanu Reeves would be a good fit for. Like for instance, Keanu Reeves is a big star, right? He is, like I said, one of the few characters that has not been in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, the DC one, the X-Men one, the Dark Universe, Fast and Furious, right? He can carry a movie, he's known internationally, so I don't think he's going to play like a bit part. I think he's going to take a big role. And for that reason, I think he draws focus. So if he is in an ensemble, I think he needs to lead it. I imagine he also commands a lot of budget. It's the other reason I don't think he'll be in a humongous ensemble. I could see him taking a role that's in one or two movies, but not constantly coming up like an Iron Man or a Spider-Man or something like that. Although, you know, I could see him taking a role where by the end he gets paid $50 million a movie like Robert Downey Jr. did, but I just don't think that's exactly what he's going to do here. Now, there are so many roles. I'm sure some of you guys have suggestions. Throw them in the comments right now. I'll give you a second. Go to the comments. Tell me who you think Keanu Reeves should play in the Marvel Cinematic Universe before you see my list, because I want to see how much we sync up together. Let's say put in like before and then that character. Leave the comment open then go to the end and say after this character so if i've convinced you or if you have your own idea that you think is great so i have a list here i have three that i think he would be an absolutely perfect fit for that i think we should really consider and you 
you know, I have a hard time thinking that at least one or two of these guys has not been a consideration for a very long time of a character Keanu Reeves could play. I think there's some others that I think he'd be a good fit for in the right circumstances, depending on how those shows and movies are made. And there's some others that I would love to see him play, but for reasons I've brought up already, maybe wouldn't be perfect. I'm going to mention those anyway. Let's start with one of the really good ones. This is one of the top three that I think it's a no brainer. If they recast the character and by recast, I mean, didn't use the character from the old movies that aren't canon. I think Keanu Reeves would be a terrific Ghost Rider. And I'm talking Johnny Blaze. Couple reasons. First of all, like I've already said, he's played a lot of characters that are connected to the devil, connected to spirituality. He has also played a stunt rider, specifically a motorcycle rider, but also cars and speed or something I think we would all associate with Keanu Reeves. Also, very importantly, Ghost Rider is a character very connected to grief, death. The loss of his father, at least in the movie, is what drives him to make the deal with the devil that turns him into the Ghost Rider. And obviously, as a character that's connected to demons and ghosts and things like that, you know, his stories can get a little dark. And I think Keanu Reeves has a vibe that works very well with that. Also, this is incredibly important. I don't want to underestimate this. Keanu Reeves, maybe more than any other actor I can think of in history, has complete and total control over one name. He has played more iconic Johns or Johnnies than anyone else in the history of cinema because there are only so many and he's he's played almost all of them. And I think, you know, you can look at some, there's some where an actor's got one or two and, and I think it's bizarre and you don't see it with other actors, right? Tom Cruise plays Ethan Hunt in Mission Impossible, but then he goes into another movie, he doesn't play Ethan in Valkyrie or uh, Ethan in Tropic Thunder, Ethan the Agent, he, different name. And I think perhaps it has something to do how much John Wick plays an everyman very well. He's very relatable. So he gets a lot of Johns, but they're not all the same kind of John. Here's a list of some Johns, obviously. We got John Wick and we got Johnny Silver from Cyberpunk. Those are some recent Johns. Also very important, John Constantine, who we've already mentioned. Johnny Mnemonic, a movie that admittedly I haven't seen, but I know that he, I'm pretty sure he is named Johnny in that. He is also Jonathan Harker or Harkness or whatever that character is called in the Dracula movie. He is also a character named Don John in a version of Much Ado About Nothing. Point Break, Johnny Utah. He's got a new show coming out where he plays a character named John. He's also in a movie that I've never seen where he is a character named John. This movie from like 2015. He's a terrific John Johnny actor. He's, he's done so many John and Johnny roles that I think playing a character named Johnny Blaze is great. And I think Ghost Rider is the main character of a Ghost Rider movie, not part of an ensemble. And it's a, it's a big meaty role that obviously Nicolas Cage, another actor everyone knows has played before. And I think if you saw the news today, imagine imagine almost all these guys this way. If you saw the news today, Keanu Reeves casting a solo Ghost Rider movie. How excited would you be for that? I'd be really excited. I think he'd be able to do something really cool with it. Because also, Keanu Reeves has a very understated kind of vibe, but also he can go big if he needs to. He can, he can be exciting. So he's not like Nicolas Cage where he's constantly at that level or that's what you're expecting from him. But when that needs to happen, he's got more range than we'd expect. And also, I think part of the thing about Keanu Reeves, and, and this will come up overall throughout the video, but Keanu Reeves, we, especially, you know, people my age and maybe older, grew up with Keanu Reeves and this idea that Keanu Reeves maybe wasn't a great act especially, you know, after the Dracula movie with the silly accents and, and stuff like that. And the Matrix people are like, whoa, he says, whoa, and I know Kung Fu. But like Keanu Reeves, A, has grown a lot since then. He's done a lot of different roles. He's got, you know, a ton of range, but also even in like the Matrix, he pulls off a great performance. He's playing an understated character. So I think Keanu Reeves is judged very harshly. And I guess part of what I'm saying here is if Keanu Reeves needed to take a big role that required some big swings, I absolutely think he could do it. Also, if Keanu Reeves in the Matrix was named John Anderson, never know the difference. It's, he's a very John character. All right, next up, I wanna talk about some X-Men. We know that they are gonna have to cast X-Men in X-Men movies. The two big franchises that the Marvel Cinematic Universe is destined to need to cast some big name actors in is X-Men, Fantastic Four. Now, I don't honestly think Keanu Reeves fits too many roles of the Fantastic Four. I don't I don't think he'd be bad as Mr. Fantastic or Doctor Doom. It's not quite for him. I think he could do it, but I don't think that's the best use of his talents. And I also have a lot of other actors, Cheedy, Dan Stevens, Dennis from Always Sunny, John Cho, that I think would make a much better Mr. Fantastic. And I, you know, I, I don't think he's gonna be, a, he would be the thing. I think he's too old for Johnny Storm, even though another good Johnny, but you know, maybe we gotta pick a Johnny here. I think Ghost Rider's the right Johnny, but I think there's some X-Men that, 
that he could pull off. Like, for instance, he isn't my first choice for Cyclops. I think he could be Cyclops. We've seen Shane Falco. He's a leader. He's conflicted. He's got a big presence, but he's also kind of understated. You know, he's tall. He's athletic. You could see him looking down at a shorter actor who plays Wolverine and having that like, hey, I'm the I'm the leader of this thing. I'm the hero. I'm the one. And then Wolverine's like, shut up, bub. And then maybe later on, he can be a little more conflicted. That would be a lot of fun for me and for and for you, hypothetically, if you're if you're watching this movie. I don't think it's perfect for him. Honestly, I think it'd be a better Havoc because honestly, Havoc is Cyclops, but more of kind of a mess. His edges are rougher. He's had a rougher upbringing and he's, you know, kind of on the bad guy side a little bit. Like he, he leans in that direction. Not necessarily, I wouldn't call him an anti-hero, but he kind of swings that way sometimes. Oh, and I guess I didn't explain Havoc. Havoc Cyclops' brother who was like, oh, he really doesn't have a brother. And, and then he comes back into the picture, leads X Factor, part of the Hellions recently. And, and he, he's just like Cyclops, but with problems. And that's fun. I really like Havoc. I think Havoc is good. Again, don't love him for Havoc. He could do it. Also, I'll throw in Mr. Sinister. I think Keanu Reeves, like I said, has more range than we give him credit for. But Mr. Sinister, big villain, Nathaniel Essex of the X-Men, been a character, and I've talked about him several times. I think he's great. He's been around since the 1800s, and he's always been, you know, kind of like messing around with evolution. I, I want to say he was a contemporary of Charles Darwin. He made a deal with Apocalypse. Isn't necessarily a mutant, but has like powers and is obsessed with Cyclops and Jean Grey. I don't know. I think Keanu Reeves could do it. I think he's got the look. I think he's got the presence. I think he's a big actor. He could come in for one or two movies, blow us away, and then be done. Leave a big mark on the MCU, kind of like Killmonger or something like that. Or Justin Hammer. Now, I think there's some smaller parts that I think Keanu Reeves would probably be better for than any of those three. I think Keanu Reeves would make a terrific gambit. First off, very athletic, great stunt actor. I don't know if he could do the accent, but, you know, I'll give him a chance. He could figure it out. But I just think he's a very fun character. Character. He needs a lot of charisma. Gambit needs to be very likable, but also kind of a puckish rogue. And I think Keanu could pull that off. But if I had to pick one X-Men that I think Keanu Reeves would be a great casting for, I think he could be a pretty awesome Nightcrawler. Like we've already said, when it comes to Neo and Constantine, he's very much connected to religion, to Jesus and Nightcrawler, the character in the movie that he's in, and also way more in the comics, is a very spiritual character. He's also incredibly athletic. He even very recently sported a beard and hair combination that I, I think could really be close to Keanu Reeves. Now, unless they made a Nightcrawler solo movie, I don't expect Keanu Reeves to just pop into these movies because I do think he would draw focus. He is probably a bigger actor than whoever they get for Cyclops and Jean Grey. So unless they really wanted to just blow out the budget, this is probably not going to happen. Those are your X-Men. Let's talk about some cosmic characters because I think that's another well we're going to pull a lot of characters from in the future. Speaking of X-Men adjacent characters, I think he'd be a fine Corsair. Corsair, if you don't know, Cyclops and Havoc and Vulcan and apparently a fourth one. He's the Summer's father who pretty much went and did a Star-Lord before Star-Lord was Star-Lord. Created a Guardians of the Galaxy kind of team of rogues called the Star Jammers. And they are a crew of misfit aliens. I think they'd be a fun movie. I do think they're a little too similar to the Guardians of the Galaxy, but I do think that the Star Jammers could work on the screen maybe as a show. And I think it'd be a fine Corsair. Also, there's a character in there called Raza Longknife, who is their resident swordsman. I think Keanu Reeves has put a lot of work. He did that 47 Ronin movie. He's probably a really terrific stunt sword fighter and he's got a lot of practice with that. He also seems to really, you know, vibe with that. It's it's something that seems to interest him. I'd want a role that's interesting to Keanu. I think he could be that character. Now, out of everybody on that list, I think he's the lowest profile of all of these. So there's no chance if they made a Star Jammer show, he would be Razzle Longknife. But I was trying to find characters that are swordsmen in the Marvel Cinematic Universe besides the character that is named Swordsman. Raza is one of the only ones that comes up besides like Blade, who is already cast, and Nightcrawler, also a swordsman. So I'm sure there's some others that I'm probably forgetting, but Raza Longknife, he could do it. He could also be a character named Korvok. So we're going to talk about some really powerful characters in the Marvel Cinematic Universe now. Characters that will show up and be like, whoa, this guy's on the level of Captain Marvel or something like that, because these are characters that have been either the main character or a savior of humanity or a villain in a big cosmic event. So Korvok, Michael Korvok, I think his first name is 
Michael. He is an experiment man who just gets immense cosmic power, causes a lot of problems. I believe there are rumors Korvac is the main villain in Captain Marvel 2, so it might be too late for Korvac. In that same vein, speaking of characters it's too late for, I think Keanu would have been an absolutely terrific Adam Warlock. Now, I'm not quite sure what they're going for with this new Adam Warlock. That's not to say that I don't think Coulter will be a bad Adam Warlock. I trust James Gunn maybe more than anyone else in terms of casting, but if I just had to cast an Adam Warlock from scratch, Keanu Reeves, he's the one. He's got the long hair. He's got the very Space Jesus vibe. I think he could absolutely nail it. There's another character in the cosmic realm named the Gladiator, who I talked about in a recent video. He is the Superman of the Shi'ar alien empire. He is an X-Men adjacent character, and basically he's got a cool mohawk, and he's powered by confidence. So I think part of what we could do with Keanu Reeves in the Marvel Cinematic Universe is play up the idea of Keanu Reeves. Like, this guy, you see him and you're like, whoa, that guy's trouble. He's got a lot of confidence. He's very dangerous. Been around the block and, like, he shows up and he's like, yeah, I got this. Don't worry. I'm the gladiator. And I think if he comes in like he was in that rom-com, I think he could do that. I think that would be fun for him. Also, I just think, it, you know, even though he is part of an ensemble, I don't think he'd need to be a huge part of those movies. So I think if he comes in, draws a little focus and then leaves, that'd be terrific. Also, there's a character named Jack Flagg who was a compatriot of Captain America's who ended up on the Guardians of the Galaxy. And he's got a very rogue, rough edges kind of vibe. He was part of the 2008 Guardians. I don't think this is a great choice for him in terms of like being a very small part of a Guardians of the Galaxy movie. Like I wouldn't say Marvel's wasting him there, but I think there's other roles he's probably better for. But I think he could be Jack Flagg. I think he could also be Nova, Rick Ryder. Now Rick Ryder is going to show up very soon. Out of all the characters that there have been rumors that have been cast for a while or people they're talking about ever since Guardians 2014 where the Nova Corps actually show up, people have gone, well, where's Rick Ryder? It'd be like a Green Lantern movie without Hal Jordan. And the answer is, we don't know. Maybe he's off doing his own missions. Maybe he hasn't come into his own in the Marvel Cinematic Universe yet. Maybe he is long dead or like, you know, he came and went. He's going to show up as a mentor to Sam Alexander. It's unclear. And Rick Ryder, I would say for me, is not necessarily a blank slate, but I think out of all of these characters, he's the one who you could take a lot of big kind of high profile actors and throw them in there, give that character a lot of presence, but then take that character in very different directions than they've gone in the comics. So I don't know. He's self-righteous to an extent, but he's also a very serious character. He's very powerful. He gets involved in very big galactic events and he's fun. He's got a fun power set. He's got a great look. If I remember correctly, he's kind of a ladies man. Rick Ryder is part of the new warriors and he's got that vibe there. I think there's a lot you could do with him. I think there's a lot of directions you could go. And I think Keanu could make something fun. Though. We already talked about one of the characters I think he'd be perfect for, which is Ghost Rider. Let's talk about another one. This is another cosmic character. And for the longest time, when people said Keanu would be great in the MCU, I've thought, yeah, he's the Silver Surfer. He is maybe the perfect Silver Surfer in my eyes. Hey, he can surf. He is Johnny Utah. That is so big. He is the most iconic movie surfer, probably, right? Besides Bodhi, the villain of the movie, rest in peace. But beyond that, the Silver Surfer is a big deal. He will probably show up in a Fantastic Four movie, probably like the second or third Fantastic Four movie, as the big bad. And he will be like, oh my god, this is a paradigm shift. This guy showed up, beat all of our heroes, and said, Galactus is coming to Earth. You can't do anything about it. You saw how much of a problem I was for you? Yeah, Galactus a million times worse. He is... Also, another kind of space Jesus. He is a very, very, very powerful character, very zen vibe. And on top of that, he is conflicted. I would say, and I, I talked about this in one of my whiteboard videos from back, back, back in the day. He's kind of space John Wick. What happens with the Silver Surfer is Galactus comes to his home planet and he says, I'm going to destroy this planet unless you become my herald. But I can't remember. Either the Silver Surfer makes a deal with Galactus or Galactus comes up with the deal. Either way, it ends up with the Silver Surfer surfer is now Galactus' herald. He is imbued with phenomenal power cosmic and his job is to go out and find other planets for Galactus to devour and that's the only way he can save his planet. So he's got a lot of guilt on his shoulders. That character has a ton of pathos. He would be very interesting and I think the kind of role that Keanu Reeves would be perfect for. He plays these very conflicted characters with very difficult pasts and it would be so much fun to see him take on a role that makes him not only a surfer but a Jesus-y figure 
figure and also a John Wicky kind of figure. It's he's an absolutely fantastic Silver Surfer. And I, I cannot impress how much I think that is if I had to pick one, probably what he'll end up being because he is also just a big actor. Because I think what will happen with some of these characters, Ghost Rider and maybe some of the X-Men is they'll get cast and people are like, hey, didn't they already do one of those? And it's like, oh, I don't remember. Maybe. But if Keanu Reeves is cast, you're like, it definitely wasn't Keanu Reeves. So this is a new thing. People, especially with the X-Men that aren't super fans like myself, will have a tough time figuring out the continuity and be like, does this count? Does that count? Does this count? So I think if you bring in an actor like Keanu Reeves, it's like, well, he hasn't been in these before. So these are new. Silver Surfer is one of those characters who people might remember from the Fox movies and go like, oh yeah, he was definitely in one of these before. And I guess he's not anymore. This is a new guy. Also, Keanu Reeves would be great for that character after Galactus. So once Galactus is defeated or he is freed and he just has the power cosmic and he's roaming the universe, there's so many cool stories you could do with him. It'd be so fun to see him as part of an annihilation storyline. He's very powerful and he can come in in a big cosmic event and be like, hey, I'm here. So this is very good. This is good for you because look at how powerful I am. All right, now we're on to the last four. These are what I'm calling miscellaneous. These are three that I think he could do and then a fourth one that I think he should absolutely do. So the three first one, we talked about Johns. We talked about Keanu's, you know, proclivity towards being a terrific John. I think he could play John Jameson. Now, I think if he did that, it would be a lot like that rom-com with Ali Wong that I cannot remember the name of for the life of me, where he comes in as this very charming, cool boyfriend who is very difficult. Like he's a big romantic rival to the lead. And that's something that happens in Dan Slott's She-Hulk run. John Jameson, the son of J. Jonah Jameson, astronaut, very honorable character, unlike J. Jonah Jameson. He comes in and is like, hey, She-Hulk, you want to go on a date with me? Right, is the main love interest, or, or at least main side character who wants to be a love interest, is about to ask She-Hulk out. And she's like, oh yeah, John Jameson, we'll go out. You're cool and handsome and everything that Pug is not and confident. And he can, you know, play kind of a dork. But also, John Jameson is a, is a good guy. He's also a supervillain. He's an evil werewolf man. So he could play Man-Wolf, a character character who goes to the moon, I think gets exposed to moon radiation, becomes a Spider-Man villain, and then he could play a love interest with She-Hulk. I, again, I think this character would work. It's another John, and he's got that kind of all-American Shane Falco vibe, but, you know, I don't think it's the best use of his talents. I think there's a character we may end up seeing in the future named Ulysses Bloodstone. This guy is a legendary monster hunter. He is the father of Elsa Bloodstone, a slightly less legendary monster hunter, but if they wanted to introduce their own vampire, Van Helsing, someone to team up with, say, Blade or a Ghost Rider or a Moon Knight to take on some other character like Dracula, who, as much as I'd love to see him play Dracula, I don't think he's right for Dracula at this time in his life, but he could be Ulysses Bloodstone, cool, you know, lonely monster hunter. He's a very John Constantine-y character. I was trying to figure this out. Who is the most John Constantine Marvel Cinematic Universe character that has not been part of it yet that he would fit the role, you know, ra racially. Also, speaking of racially, I think Namor is a really tough cast. It seems like Namor is going to show up in something soon, so he's probably already cast. I think Keanu Reeves would be a good Namor. I think he could do it. I think he's got confidence. I think he's probably similar to the right ethnicity, whatever they're going for. And, you know, he's He's got a, he's, he's probably pretty cut, you know? I think Namor, even more than confidence, he's got to be a little arrogant. He's got to come in and be like, I am the king and what are all you peons trying to stop me? You don't have any domain over what I'm doing. Screw you. And then bat all the Avengers away. I think he could do that. I think Keanu Reeves could absolutely do that. I feel like that character's probably already been cast. So I don't, I don't think it's worth casting him here. Second to last one. I want to talk about Norman Osborn. I think Norman Osborn is another character and assuming that we'll Willem Dafoe, who, who could say, but you know, he's, he's playing Norman Osborn or some version of Norman Osborn in Spider-Man Far From Home. But assuming that he is a different universe as Norman Osborn, I think, you know, Peter Parker from the Earth that's the Marvel Cinematic Universe needs his own Norman Osborn. And I think it would be fun here now because another actor, maybe Willem Dafoe is never named Norman Osborn to the public. Spider-Man knows that's who he is, but that's not something that everyone else knows. So then a businessman, a Norman Osborn shows up and comes on the scene and everyone's like, oh, Norman Osborn, we love him. He's great. And Spider-Man's like, I don't trust this guy because he has the same name as my apparently arch nemesis from another world, but maybe he's good. And that would be fun conflict for Spider-Man. And then, you know, Harry Osborn shows up and they become friends and that makes it even worse. So if we wanted to do a different Green Goblin, I think Keanu could do that. I think there's a lot of space for a different actor to play that role.
potential to be the Green Goblin of the Marvel Cinematic Universe in, in a way that would be fun. I don't think it has to be Keanu, but but I think he could do it. And I think the Green Goblin needs to be a big role. That needs to be a big actor. He could come in for maybe two movies. Maybe one movie is just kind of a nice guy who is trying to, you know, who, who seems trustworthy to everyone but Spider-Man. And then later he becomes a villain. You know, and if he took over S.H.I.E.L.D. and turned it into Evil S.H.I.E.L.D. like he did after Secret Invasion, like that, that would work for me. I think he's an actor that could pull that off. But OK, I like Ghost Rider. I think Ghost Rider would be fun. I think Silver Surfer would be great. I, that used to be my obvious choice. But then I thought about one more character that I think Keanu Reeves would be absolutely terrific for. And if I had to pick one guy that I think he should play, it's this character. Oh, let me sit down for this one. So in the 80s, I want to say 82 or 84, there was a Marvel Comics event called Secret War. It was one of the biggest events in comics. Basically, a bunch of different superheroes and villains were pulled onto a patchwork world. It's like a different planet created called Battle World. And it was just like, you guys fight. We'll see what happens. You know, that'll be that'll be interesting for me. Some sort of cosmic space god or whatever. And throughout this whole story, you know, the heroes are fighting a little bit. The X-Men cause a bunch of trouble. The villains, which are, you know, some Spider-Man villains, the Wrecking Crew and Doctor Doom, try a couple of schemes wherein really Doctor Doom is just trying to steal whatever phenomenal cosmic power got them to Battle World because that's that's what Doom does. They did Secret Wars 2 because Secret Wars 1 was very popular. Also, if I called it Secret War, I meant Secret Wars. And then in 2015, they did a different Secret Wars run made by Jonathan Hickman, where Doom got the powers of Molecule Man and turned all of the world into Battle World again. A lot of great stories came out of that. And Doom merged some of the characters from the Ultimate Universe with the 616 Universe. That's like kind of how Miles Morales got over and stuff like that. Now, it seems like that event will happen soon in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I think the reason they haven't done it yet is they're waiting for characters like the Fantastic Four and the X-Men to exist. Once they're in there, then boom, I think we're getting a Secret Wars. I think that's one of our next big events. And we've also heard from, I believe, the writer of Secret Wars that Marvel seems to have some plans to do something with that in the movies. And we've heard from the Russo brothers, the directors of Captain America Winter Soldier, Civil War, Infinity War, Endgame, some of the biggest movies ever made, that they really want to do Secret Wars. That's the movie they would come back to direct. And uh, are you guys ready for Secret Wars yet or what? Uh, you know, one of these days we'll have to see how this all shakes out. I don't know what they're going to do with all these characters. The word is you guys are you guys are talking again. Is that true? Uh, uh, now the catalyst of that whole series is a character named the Beyonder. The Beyonder's whole deal. You know, things change, but one of at least I think the top three strongest, most powerful characters in Marvel Comics, at least at a point he was. I want to say he was number two. Characters over characters like the Living Tribunal, just below the one above all, who is like Marvel God, and I think like usually stand in for the writer. He put together Secret Wars as just something he wanted to do for fun, to prove that good could beat evil. That's what he did in the cartoon, at least. In the comic it's a little bit more complicated than that, but I honestly can't even remember. I don't think in the first Secret Wars we go too far into what he actually wants to prove from this, but he's got that kind of God making a bet on Job, like, eh, can I mess up this guy's life and will he then still believe in me? What do you think, devil? You want to take some odds in that, like, God is bored, so he decides to play some games with the people and, like, you know, the Greek gods uh, do similar things. The Beyonder's like that. Now he has played a lot of different roles since then, and there's even a race of Beyonders, which is why I think the power level is a little questionable. But he has been a hero. He has been, you know, also a villain. He has showed up in some of the animated material. He was in the Spider-Man show. He was in the most recent Avengers show with his gigantic shoulder pads. I think the Beyonder is the perfect role for Keanu Reeves. He's essentially space god. He is the one. He is the character above almost all else who has unlimited power. He also needs to have that very zen Keanu Reeves. Hey, I am the Beyonder. I have summoned you here to battle world to fight. Go fight. And I think the character of the Beyonder is perfect for Keanu because he can do one or two movies, maybe Secret Wars 
part one and part two, probably how that would play out. And he would show up and bring a ton of presence, a ton of star power to this role. It could be someone else like, you know, Brian Cox or, you know, some other terrific actor that we all love. But I think one of the things that's great about Keanu Reeves is the Beyonder is both like a big particle kind of beam of light and also a guy that doesn't like look like Keanu Reeves, but can look like Keanu Reeves. Like it's, it's similar enough. Black hair, he's got a ridiculous haircut. And like I said, sometimes gigantic shoulder pads. But I think you need a character who can walk in and be like, look like the perfect man, like the, the ultimate physical specimen. And I think Keanu Reeves could be one of those people. And I, and I think Keanu Reeves may be the best actor who has the perfect mix of confidence and gravitas and charisma as well as being a guy who is also in great shape and can do karate and stuff. I don't know where he will end up. I really don't. I hope he gets into the Marvel Cinematic Universe and there's so many roles that he could play. There's probably a bunch that I didn't even think of that are going to be the ones that you write in your after comment. Remember, I said that you want to do your before and your after. And if you forgot to do it before, just do just do an after. But Ghost Rider, Silver Surfer and The Beyonder are my big three. I think those roles utilize what is special about Keanu Reeves. They would be challenging to him and interesting to him. He would not draw focus from the rest of the cast. He would bring the right amount of presence to those roles. And I, I think that would be big. I think if Marvel cast him as the Silver Surfer tomorrow, Ghost Rider tomorrow, or The Beyonder tomorrow, it'd be like, wow, whatever this next project is, this Silver Surfer movie, this Ghost Rider movie, this Secret Wars movie, Marvel's taking it seriously because they got Keanu Reeves. This is how they're using him. So, you know, that's what I think. I want to do more of these videos because I like casting. I think this is fun. By the way, you see my Turbo Man there? By the I'm so proud of the Turbo Man. It's Christmas time, so everybody put your Turbo Mans up next to your Christmas trees. But I also, speaking of Christmas and, and gifts and buying yourself fantastic gifts or buying your loved ones gifts, I made Nando V Movies bookmarks. I love them. They are my favorite piece of merch that I could make that I've seen anybody make, really, because I, I just think the idea of a bookmark, because I love reading. I'm talking about all these comics. You're like, oh, I really want to get my hands on Secret Wars. Go buy it from your local comic book shop and then buy a bookmark online. Put it right in the middle of that book and then boom, you're you're reading with style. So these are on the Nando V Movie store. I would really appreciate it if you gave it a look and maybe bought one or two. Also, got to give a huge Thanks to everybody who continues to support the channel on Patreon. You guys are terrific. You're amazing. And thank you to everybody who listens to my podcast, mostly nitpicking. Speaking of Keanu, we have talked about all three Matrix movies recently, and we're going to do the next one soon. I'm, I'm so excited to, to see that. I'm so terrified, but excited. And thank you to everyone who follows me on Twitter, Instagram, Twitch, TikTok, all that stuff. I'm Nando V Movies on all of those platforms. That's all I got. Stay safe. I'll see you next time.